Rural Heritage on RFD TV is brought to you by Rural Heritage Magazine, a bi monthly magazine featuring articles about farming and logging with draft animal power, small scale diversified family farming and homesteading, and other aspects of our rich rural heritage. Rural Heritage Magazine, borrowing from yesterday to do the work of today. For subscription information, please call 319 362 3027 or order online at www.ruralheritage.com. Well, we're trying to break the record, Guinness's Book of Records, for the most mews plowing at one time. I think we've got about uh, 45 to 48 teams registered right now, so that's probably uh, 90 plus head of mules. I think the world record, uh, the Guinness world record has uh, deemed us to have 61 mules to break it, so we've, we've definitely got the teams here today and the head to do it. Can you tell me again how far you come from? About 900 miles from northwest Iowa. And when did you first hear about this event? Um, Danny Vaughn, the organizer, he called me oh about two years ago because he was looking for the some help from the Albert City, Iowa crew that put on theirs in 2016. And I told him he called the right person. Because so. <laughs> you were involved in working with Guinness on that. Correct. Right? Yeah. yeah. We had a crew up there that we tried it in 2016, but we didn't have enough animals to qualify so on the mules we only had 27 mules and guinness wanted us to have 60 to have the record so we didn't have enough animals so that was just to establish a record right Correct. they wanted 60 to establish a record right there is no current record okay but it takes right. 60 to establish it i see all right and it's um it's pretty involved isn't it working with guinness the paperwork on it I mean, they're yeah not, they're not easy no it's i mean for our horses we had to send in two or three different videos because you know they they couldn't hear the siren or they couldn't see this or they wanted more details of this so it's it's a long process it's not just everybody come out here and plow when you got it i mean it's there's a lot of i's to dot and a lot of t's to cross why do you want to do this why would you do this well i just love muse you know and and, and i just want to get everybody together I, I, I'm gonna say 80% of these people, I know them from either trail riding, wagon riding, somewhere I know them, you know, uh, what, you know, wagon training, just all that stuff, and I know them, and they, I knew they would come if we'd have it, so, and here they are, you know. Everybody that's family oriented, all these wives and kids, and these girl, little girls riding them ponies and all that stuff, riding mules, I mean, it's just, it makes my heart warm. That's a nice one, isn't it? Yes, sir. <laughs> a nice plow. Yes, sir. I just telling him the newer ones don't have as many gadgets on them. Don't seem like as the older ones did, though. We're gonna put the three the three mules in a lane by themselves. So if you've got three mules, Bruce is gonna put you in your own lane by yourself, and then and then the rest of the teams will you tell Bruce kind of how you how they walk and he'll try to place you accordingly. All right, it's pretty muddy. Mother Nature's dealt us a pretty low hand this week. If you've got smaller mules, raise the plow up a little bit. And don't quit. Whatever you do, keep walking. If the team in front of you stops, go around them. But we're going to try to space you off enough space that it'll allow you. I mean, don't don't drive right up on the man behind you. Give yourself a little bit of room so if he does stop, you can keep moving. Whatever you do, do not stop walking. 
This is Kelly Craft. She's from Iowa. They they said it last year with horses in Iowa, and she's been my right arm. She's going to tell you some things that they did that will try to help us with the mules because we want to do this. We've got enough here. There's already enough registered to do it. You want to come up here? You want She's married, she's my wife. <laughs> Jealous husband. <laughs> no, he's just, he's just saying the facts. He just want to get that all known. Let's give these mule skinners here a round of applause. All right, this is Kelly. Um, some of the things we did in Albert City, um, probably most of you don't realize that this is the easy part. There is probably three months worth of paperwork they have to do to get this to go through, okay? This is the easy part, but it takes cooperation from everybody to make it go. Um, like Danny said, you go in in numerical order. The reason for that is they have to send in video proof of every team that was here. So as you go in, there will be a camera at the end, and as you go by that camera, you'll say, Kelly Craft, Albert City, Iowa, or you'll say wherever your name and wherever you're from. Danny Vaughn, Cookville, Tennessee, Grady George, Woodbury, Tennessee, so on, just like that. Say it loud and clear so that uh, if Guinness, Guinness might call you and say, you know, did you guys actually do this or um, Guinness has a lot of doubts about everything that goes on. So we have to prove to them in every way, shape, and form that you did it. Whatever you do, maintain forward motion. The reason for that is if 10% would stop, we're disqualified. Now we can go back to the other end of the field and start over, but for that run, we would be disqualified. You're allowed 10%. So if there's 70 mules, if two teams of three and, a, and another team for some reason, at some point in time, stop, then we're disqualified. We'd have to go back and start over, which was plenty of land to do that. Um, hopefully we won't have to do that. Okay, so after you get in there, you'll no longer be in numerical order. Wherever you feel comfortable plowing, um, just make sure you tell him, you know, I'm, I'm a slow walker, put me at the end. Or towards the end. Everybody, has yes. everybody, it's a requirement everybody from Guinness that you have a helper. Everybody's got to have. Everybody, right. if you don't have a helper, go to the go to the registration, and we'll we'll get. Some. The helper is if you have a wreck, they can keep you from making other people getting into a wreck. Yeah. Okay. The helper typically walks beside the the person on the plow. Okay. After everybody's in there, the first team will go up and stop at a flag in your furrow. Then the next team comes in and spaces accordingly. And when you hear the starting signal, go ahead. This will be your starting signal. Can everybody hear that? It'll be louder. It'll be a lot louder. Okay. That is a signal to go. But don't go before the team in front of you goes. Okay? You, it, it sounds stupid, but it happens. Trust me, it happens. <laughs> okay, now once we get started, just because you are moving does not mean the one minute starts. The one minute starts when the officials say that everybody is moving. So the first team might end up going two and a half minutes. Okay? Whatever you do, do not stop till you get to the other end of the field. After a minute, an official minute, you will hear the horn again. Do not stop. Okay? That's just our signal to Guinness that we have called the one minute time. Because if you stop, it has to be one complete video from start to finish. One take. One take. So if everybody keeps moving, no matter what, keep moving to the end of the field. Now when you get to the end of the field, about a hundred, hundred feet right here at the end, pull up and just come out of the field. Just get out of the way of the teams behind you. Just, just, and then we may have to go back and do it again. 
And be patient if we have to start over because the videos have to start over, the timers have to get ready, all that kind of stuff has to take place. Be a little break there. So once you get out there and the horn blows, you are going until you get to the end of the field. Now going out is the same thing. They have to have a video of everybody leaving. The same place. So you will you have in. to come out of the field. Oh, that tree. And then after that, I guess Danny can tell you. You know, if you can have a free for all out there or what you want to do, but <laughs> mud wrestling, whatever we want to do. Yeah. For the for the video purposes, do not leave the field until you are dismissed. Okay? First and foremost, I want to thank everybody for coming. I know some of you just traveled a long way. And I want to thank everybody for coming because we couldn't do it without y'all. So thank you very much. Also, Sean McClain, the gentleman in the red shirt, he paid everybody's entry fee. Woo! All of our sponsors, thank y'all. We really appreciate it. Grady George, he furnished the land. You know, we've, we've messed up this field. Maybe it'll come back. <laughs> but thank Grady George. Because me and him's been running around like chickens with their heads cut off for three days.
As we were preparing this episode to air, organizer Danny Vaughn told me the paperwork is still being submitted, but they expect to hear from Guinness Record officials sometime later in January whether they were successful in setting the world record for the most mules plowing simultaneously for one minute. To learn more, visit the Middle Tennessee Mule Skinners website shown on the bottom of the screen. Hi, I'm Joe Mishka of Rural Heritage Magazine. I'm on location of one of the many events we cover that celebrates our rural heritage. If you enjoy our show, check out our magazine, where you'll learn more about the people that blend the past with what works today. You can save almost 20% off the newsstand price by subscribing at ruralheritage.com or chat with us at 877-647-2452. That's toll free, 877-647-2452. Hey, I'm Stacy Lynn, and today we're making banana pudding in mason jars. I love this dessert. It's perfect for a lot of things. Tailgating, camping, it's a cute little dessert that everybody can have. It's just all around an awesome dessert. And by the end of this video, you are gonna be hooked on banana pudding in mason jars. In the South, banana pudding is the quintessential dessert. You won't be at a picnic, potluck, barbecue, or dinner on the grounds without there being several versions of banana pudding. If you mention it, there's bound to be a brawl because passions rise when it comes to the way each person likes their banana pudding. Some like it with the vanilla wafer soggy, some like it fresh, some like with meringue, some like it with whipped cream. One thing that remains the same though is the filling. It's really a custard that is to die for, I might add. Banana pudding is a simple thing to make and everybody likes to get the, the little um, banana pudding or vanilla pudding, chocolate pudding, and, and they're okay at the store, but it's just as easy if you're gonna make some for a lot of people, it's really just as easy. All it really takes is cornstarch, sugar, milk, a little bit of butter, vanilla, a little salt, and eggs. And everybody has that pretty much in their pantry. You don't have to run out to the store and get anything. All right, so here we go. So I've got my cornstarch and my sugar. I'm just gonna give that a stir. I don't have the oven on right now. Okay, I'm just gonna get that good and incorporated because in a minute, I'm gonna be pouring the milk in with the eggs. And pour my eggs in here. And those are not all, they're egg yolks, not, not the complete egg. Millie, I'm gonna have you helping me in just a minute. I want you to slowly pour this into the pot for me. So the reason I'm having her do this, I could do it, but I wanna make sure that it gets really good and incorporated and doesn't break up when I stir it. So I like to pour it to have an extra pour so that I can be stirring at the same time as she is pouring, okay? So I'm gonna bring this to a boil, but I'm gonna start on medium heat. That's perfect, you are doing so good. So it's actually a pastry cream I'm making instead of a custard because I'm using a little bit of cornstarch. If you're using cornstarch or flour to thicken or to keep your eggs from curdling, then you're actually making a pastry cream. Okay, so this is gonna take about eight minutes to start to boil and then we are gonna have a pudding. Did you see how easy that was? I'm gonna add a little pinch of salt to this and then I'm gonna add a little butter and vanilla and that is it and I'll have my banana pudding. So this tightened up beautifully, beautifully. Look at that, it's just so pretty. Don't you know how good that's gonna taste? Now this is the same pastry cream that you would use for a coconut pie or a chocolate meringue pie or well, like we're having banana pudding or banana pudding pie. So it's, it's that same thing. Super, super, super easy. Everybody needs to know this. You could also leave out the sugar and make this as a custard base for a savory pie. So before we transfer it, I am gonna add butter. Now you're gonna wanna add just a pat at the time of cold butter and stir it until it completely melts. You wanna do this part or do you wanna do the pat of butter? All right, perfect. It is so nice to have a sous chef in the kitchen. Everyone should have one. I had to keep having kids so I could keep having sous chefs. Okay, turn it over and there you go. All right, perfect. It's melting pretty fast. Just makes it so nice and shiny and silky and that rich flavor of the butter just makes this so good. Perfect timing. Okay, now I'm gonna add just a little bit of vanilla. 
Okay, a lot of people are exact, but if I had to get too exact with all of my cooking, um, I won't do it. So I have to learn how to do it by measurement site and the way things feel. I have seven kids. I do not have time to be exact. Okay, we're just gonna put this together. You get one and I'll get one. Put a couple of the cookies in the bottom, not a whole lot, maybe a little less than that, perfect. Okay, and then you get a little bit of the cream. Here you go, ready? There you go. Yes. See, and this will harden up in the refrigerator. Okay, I'm gonna go a little bit deeper in here. Okay, and then let's slice up some bananas. There you go. I like a big chunk of banana. Okay, I'm gonna push that down just in there a little bit more. Perfect. Then I'm gonna to top it with the whipped cream. Okay, here you go. Now, if you're gonna eat it right now, like I'm sure that we are gonna do in just a minute, you top it. If not, go ahead and put the lid on it. And then you can add a couple these are mini vanilla wafers, which are awesome, but you can also um, crumble them up, add a little butter, toast them, and put them on the top. And that, that's a little bit more elegant if you're gonna have like some kind of big affair. Put my vanilla wafers down in the bottom. And then vanilla pudding. Oh, wow, that looks so good. Okay, all right, there you go. You wanna switch? Straight down in there, there you go. Perfect. All right, here you go. Am I knocking your head in? A little bit. Here, <laughs> you move back over here. Oh, we're having to do a dance. Okay, all right, get a little bit of whipped cream. Yeah, somebody's gonna get some whipped cream. Okay. Perfect. You decided to crumble yours and make yours a little bit more elegant, huh? <laughs> On this one, I'm gonna add a top. If you're gonna have the bananas where the air hits them, you're gonna wanna put a little bit of lemon juice in them so that you don't have the brownie. Or you can just put a little bit of the uh, pudding on top and, put, and then wait to put your whipped cream on it until you get to your destination. So I'll put the top on this and then it'll go in the refrigerator and wait for me and then it's all ready to go. I have this cooler that I'm gonna be loading up and I can just pack all of my jars in it and over each layer put a towel and then another layer of jars and then a towel and then I'm good to go. The only thing is, I'm not sure where I'm gonna put my husband's jar. I'm Stacy Lynn and this is Amelia and that's how you make the perfect packable banana pudding. Happy banana pudding making. Thanks for joining us today at Rural Heritage and RFD TV where we borrow from yesterday to do the work of today. This program is available for purchase. To order your copy please call 319-362-3027 or visit www.ruralheritage.com. Rural Heritage is a bi-monthly magazine dedicated to draft animal farming and logging, as well as other aspects of our rich rural heritage. It is published by Mishka Press, which also offers a complete line of back-to-the-land books, DVDs, and calendars. Call or write for a catalog or subscription information. Or visit our website at www.ruralheritage.com.